Like I strive for good energy and I thrive on good energy. I think your energy is generally pretty good too. Generally. Generally, because you've seen me bad energy. Welcome to Sex Talk with my mom. I'm Cam Potter. And I'm Karen Lee Potter. That's my mother. And that's my son. We chat about sex on a weekly basis and all the things you typically don't talk about with a parent. We like to make the most uncomfortable conversations comfortable. So strap in. Strap on. And enjoy the ride. Welcome to Sex Talk with my mom. I'm Cam Potter. And I'm Karen Lee Potter, his mother. We are chatting about sex and all the things you typically don't talk about with a parent. But today we are going to break that tradition and talk about it. Well, I mean, it's our tradition to not talk about it or to talk about it. Okay, let's talk about it. All right, we're talking about it. We got a, a question of the week that I wanted to share with our wonderful sneaky freaks. Are you ready for this one? I am, of course. When you're in a relationship... Do you still desire other people? If so, how do you manage that desire? Have you been in a relationship where you desired other people? I, I, you know, I came up with this question. I know. Because it was, it, I, I was feeling a tension, okay? The tension was, you know, I crave that intimacy. I want to be involved with someone. And then I also have the impulse to fucking be free as fuck and not be involved with any one person be free to to fuck other people to be free to travel wherever to to choose how to spend my time you know there's a constant polarity that i'm playing with right right all right so to answer this question when i'm in a relationship do i still desire other people strangely no yeah it doesn't it's not strangely at all to me why because to me that's how you are you're like you're a serial monogamous no, it's just because I have short, very short-lived relationships and the fire is on when I'm in the relationship. Well, yeah, right. And what so I haven't gone have... long enough to start, you know, my eye starts wandering. So then why would you come up with this question? Maybe you oh, maybe you just stay in that, like, desirable state. No, and I, I have a premonition that I'm going to, I'm going to feel... Uh, constrained? Itchy, itchy, constrained. Itchy. Itchy. What about you? You feel the itch sometimes? Well, what's weird is I remember dating someone back when I was single, and he was um, and he was well. We started dating, and he was single, and then he became involved with somebody, and it got very serious. And he's like, "I don't know if I can ever like just be with one person." Oh, uh, remember him saying that to me. What'd you say? I'm saying, "Well, give it a shot." And he's married with two kids. Oh, I have interesting. no idea what he's doing right now. He could be fucking everybody on site. I have but no yeah, clue. so it wasn't with you, though. It, it, it wasn't. No, it was. A, did you a end over. up breaking up with him because he wanted to no, fuck I around? No, I broke up with him because he snored. What? For real? No, well, no, not really. There was but other that issues. was part of it. Part of it was he snored. Part of it, I just, it just was time to break up. What was the time of the year? It was just time. It was just, it run a course. Yeah, that's fair. So in general, though, you don't, you don't feel the desire once you're in a relationship? Like right I now, mean, I, I, <laughs> right now, do you, do your eyes straight? Other... I've been with D's for 14 and a half years. Yeah. And there's been times over the 14 and a half years where I thought, uh, or even like a, a, a dream, a nocturnal dream. A nocturnal dream as opposed to a daydream? Yeah. You know, a nocturnal dream. A nocturnal dream. Like an nocturnal emission. Like like when I'm not not awake, when I'm sleeping. I know when you're fucking... Oh, I know okay. when you don't think I know nocturnal means sleeping. Okay, well, it's... It, all right, but the point is that over the years, I'm sure there's been times where I'm like, oh, that would have been fun. But then I'm thinking the reality of it is that I've done all, I've done a lot of sowing of my oats. Yeah. And the reality is never as good as mm, fantasy. Yeah. That's been my experience as well. Not even having sowed my oats that much. I've got several oats still stuck in my satchel, and several I still have this. oats stuck in your satchel. <laughs> what, are you walk around with your satchel collecting oats? I got a whole satchel full of oats. I'm trying to sew them, and then I get too wishy-washy and don't so sew. So is the key just to fuck as much as you can when you're single so that you don't have the desires when you're in a relationship? Or, or is it the key just to get into polyamorous relationships? Or is it to take a more mindful approach and realize, oh, it doesn't, you know, fill me up to sow my oats and just fuck all these random people. So cut out the fantasy when knowing well, what, what if reality. you like actually did it? You were in a relationship and you actually had... You just go fuck around? Well, you just fucked one other person, for example, and it worked out really well. I think it might create some uh, complications if what, I'm in a monogamous relationship. Well, if what if you're not? What if you just say, let, let's keep it open? Not a strong desire for this. Okay. 
Do you have a strong desire for this? No, I have enough tension with one person. I don't need any more in the stable. No more stable. All right, so let's hear what the sneaky freaks have to say. You know, they tend to be, you know, a little freakier than we are. Freakier and much more uh, adventuresome. Yes, exactly. So Jody says, in response to when you're in a relationship, do you still desire other people? If so, how do you manage that desire? She says... Yes, my mother told me years ago, it doesn't matter where you get your appetite as long as you eat at home. Right. You can look at the menu. You don't have to order everything on it. Why is this all food analogies over here? That's a good idea. So basically, it's okay to desire others as long as you're not fucking them. Yeah. And then once you say that that's okay to desire, then do you tell your partner? What do you think? Nah, you can keep that little secret to yourself. Keep that shit in the satchel. Keep it with the oats. With the oats. Okay. Here's one that I didn't love receiving. What? This is from Tony, one of our favorite Tonys. We have two horny-ass Tonys. Yeah, it must be the name. Tony says, when I dating my ex-girlfriend, I used to masturbate thinking about your mom (laughs) when I was alone or when I was making love to my girlfriend. Oh, boy. I would fantasize sometimes about Carol Lee. Carol Lee? (laughs) Is that someone named Carol? No, that's you, Karen Lee. Carol okay. Lee, it don't hurt the other person if don't know them. Felt good either way. Have a good week. Love you both. We love you too, Tony. You know, it doesn't hurt the other person, but it hurts Carol Lee's son to hear this Why? shit. Why? Why do I need to hear about other guys masturbating to you? I wouldn't care if other girls are masturbating to you. I would love it. Are you kidding me? For not, you probably love that shit. I didn't love it when a guy came up at um, your brother's graduation and told me that he fantasized and masturbated to me. I thought that was inappropriate. That is <laughs> very inappropriate. Okay. Was that my fucking little league coach? It was your little league coach. Fuck that guy. He was also <laughs> a fucking asshole on the field. Right. He was not a nice person. Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck him. All right. Rachel says. <laughs> How did you know that? I told you the story. No, I had a sneaking suspicion that he was <laughs> a horny ass fuck. Rachel says, what a relevant question for me right now. I've been in a long term relationship for eight years now and absolutely admire and only want my partner. Saying that. I started a new job recently, and I find my boss attractive. Oh, boy. He's not my type in any way, but maybe it's the power play or authority figure that's a turn on itself. Of course, I'd never act on it, but it's a fun little fantasy. In my case, I just keep it professional. Maybe I should role play and get my hubby to play my boss. Good call. You think that's a good call? Yeah. You lo- you love that. Look well, at you light it, up like a little Christmas tree over think there. Think about it. it. It like gets two things accomplished in the, in the in the, in place of one. You satisfy the partner, right? And then you you don't satisfy the the boss. And also, or you the, satisfy yourself because you're fantasizing about yeah, the boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, it's good. Good. Tom, the elder statesman. Oh no. You know he's got seventy years under his belt. Seventy one years. He's got a lot, a lot of fantasies under his belt. Yes, sometimes desire for another creeps into any relationship. Especially when that relationship has lasted 50 years. Occasionally, the desired becomes the focus of a hot fantasy when masturbating or even when screwing. Not proud of it, but a couple times the burning flame desire, burning hot desire, plus opportunity enticed me to briefly stray. He swung from the trees. He (laughs) swung. Yeah, as as he like he he, as he loves there. to do. The Tarzan swung. Tom went flying out the trees, came back in, was none, none the wiser. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if Jane knew. Apparently, Jane didn't know it. He didn't I, say that it became. She might have known. She might have been okay with it. Who knows? But he did say not proud of it. Well, okay. who knows? That's why I say he pr- that probably did not. So, with the wisdom, this suggests maybe it's wise for the the younger. The, what are the what do we call the Little yeah. little freaks, the little freaks, not little, to, not to, little, little younger not to who, stray when they're feeling that burning hot desire, right? But that's tempting. The burning hot desire plus opportunity entice Jesus. Oy vey. All right, Gina says, I've always been very loyal in relationships. Unless my partner cheats first, I don't cheat. Oh, a little revenge cheat right there. Uh, would you do that? A revenge cheat? Yeah. No, I'd rather have a discussion and flesh it shit out and say this is uh, very upsetting to me. Okay. What about you? You'd revenge cheat? Well, that's good for Have the you goose. Done it? No, I've never done anything like that at all. I'm just saying either I'd break up, which I probably would, mm-hmm. or I'd say, should we open this up? Which 
you who probably knows? wouldn't. Probably wouldn't. <laughs> but, you know, but now is different than when you were. Yeah, young. yeah. Who knows? Maybe you'd be open. We got Drew who says wife desires other people as we are in a cuck relationship. Okay. I'm speaking at a wedding this weekend. About being in a cuck relationship? No, but somehow cuckolds came up and and in, uh, in our conversation a couple weeks ago it, with the with the couple getting married, and uh, they challenged me to include the word cuckold cuckold dress and bowl in the the wedding toast oh well as long as, you, as long as you've uh, gotten the approval from them it doesn't really how am i gonna fucking just you know sneak those words in there like give an analogy oh give an analogy oh this is the time that you allowed me to stay on your couch made made feel like a uh, like a young strapping cuck yes <laughs> <laughs> okay alicia says Good morning and great question. I love the reinforcement with the question. I know you do, especially when you come up with a question. You, well, you know, sometimes they're good questions. Sometimes it inspires people. This one inspired a, a nice meaty response. When I was in previous relationships and my needs were not being met, I would desire other people. In regards to oh. the relationship that I'm in now, I have not desired another person. I think it's because I'm in such a wonderful and healthy relationship. All my needs are met emotionally and physically, so my desire is only for him. Me who, and my boyfriend. Who is this? Alicia, Alicia. Me and my boyfriend have talked about looking and desiring other people. We both agree that it's okay to check out other people because let let's be real. There's a lot of sexy people in the world, but if our looking turns to desire, then something must be missing in our relationship. I don't know that that's necessarily missing. It just it just. To me, it, it means that you might just have a fantasy. Yeah, I think so. I think it is a menu thing. It's the, you know, if you're you eating salad. You like my salad, menu analogy. Yeah, 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 I do. Even me, the salad eater. I'm eating salads nonstop. Sometimes I'm looking at a menu. I'm like, God, the hamburger would taste so good Again right now. Again with the hamburger. I'm thinking that you like to eat red meat. I fucking love hamburgers. Since when? I love hamburger. Who doesn't like a hamburger? You're always eating vegetarian. i never seen you eat, order a hamburger. It's because I feel terrible for a big cow. I have never heard you ever... Eating Love hamburgers. Hamburgers. Okay. Learn so, something every day about your son. Yeah. Don't assume. Because you might get ass out of you and me. Thank okay. you, mother. All right. Thank, <laughs> thank you, mother. Are <laughs> you thanking yourself? I'm thanking my mother. Oh, she would say that? All right. Alicia, thank you for that response. And um, I think it's okay to desire other people as long as you don't act on it. That's but my I don't, general feeling. I, I don't think that, she, you know, it's wonderful Alicia's in this relationship, but I, it probably is going to be hard standards to maintain. And I think that at, at times you might not have that full throttle. Everything is being met. Alicia, if we're doing this podcast in, say, two or three more years, God willing, will you, <laughs> che will you check in with us and let us know if, if it ever straight, the desire ever straight? Or not necessarily even straight, just if things aren't always like 100% in all the categories, everything being checked, mm -hmm. does Alicia ever fantasize about just being with someone else, like being with Bill Clinton? But maybe not. Maybe Alicia really is in this very strong relationship, and that's good. That's good. All right, moving right along. One other thing I might add. Yes. I know someone who's in a very strong uh, marital relationship for years, and they have a they have an understanding that she is they can both go with partners outside of the marriage mm. um as long as they come back and tell the, each other the stories mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i've heard that shit yeah in my case i would never want someone to tell me a story like that. <laughs> you would not want to hear that i would be very very you want to hear you don't want to hear how your wife or partner is swinging from the rafters no with someone else why are they always swinging from the rafters first of i all, don't know how many places are you in that have rafters there's people that like to swing from rafters are you in like a lot of log cabins no but that's like an old saying like swinging from the chandeliers I've heard swinging from the chandelier makes a little more sense. Yeah, more yeah. What would around. happen if you swung from a chandelier? The thing would come down. The whole thing would come down like Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Joshua says, uh, when I'm in a relationship, I still desire other people. I would manage that desire by communicating to my partner, one, if she or he wants to be in a poly relationship, two, if she or he wants a play partner during sex, three, if she or he wants to go to a sex party and have sex with people there. Also, I would have a conversation with my partner about both of our needs, wants, desires, red flags, and more in a in adding other people in our relationship. That's a sneaky ass response, freaky <laughs> ass response. And that's the type of shit we're looking for. Well, who's looking for that? 
I like that people are out there living living an open life like this. It's, you really have to have a very strong sense of who you are and not be jealous yeah. and insecure and feel, um, I mean, this jealousy is going to come up regardless. It just it rears its ugly head no matter what. I don't care who, how open-minded you are. It's going to come up. Yeah. So why add that element if you don't need to? Yeah. Well, maybe maybe you both like that. I, I think that that's I mean, very possible. I, I think can, it's a new way of uh, being. I mean, I've been with Dee's for a long time, and he's pointed out women that he's attracted to, and I'm like, fine, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> if you think you could go for that, go for it. But uh, no, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. It's not going to hurt anybody. Cassie says, hello, I've been in a long relationship, long-term relationship for a while, and crushes do happen. It's inevitable. Thank you, Cassie. That's what I'm trying to say. But without fostering an intimate connection, my brain will lose fascination after mm-hmm. a matter of time. I haven't cheated and don't ever plan to, but I may have had some private fantasies when I needed some spank bank material. There you go. Spank bank material. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same way where if... If I don't reinforce the fantasy, it just completely dissolves. Gets, you can get rid of all that sexual tension. It, but then if I start masturbating repeatedly to this person, it creates that neural connection. Fucking, that thing's going to be drilled in me. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> all right. Uh, you want to do one more? Yeah. We, I mean, we got a lot of responses over here. Well, start banging them out so bang them out yeah no, there's you see too many it's honestly too many to bang all right katie says yes my partner and i are in a long-term relationship we both understand people are attractive so we usually talk about the other people we find hot to each other like what you were suggesting yeah if we're interested in hooking up with someone we used to try to do everything together like threesomes and group stuff but as we've grown we'll go and hook up with others separately we manage it with communication and being open and honest about everything. I found in this type of relationship that is key. As soon as you lie and keep your feelings to yourself, the others will end up getting hurt. Hope this makes sense. Love y'all. Short version, yes, and we talk to each other about it. Katie. But does she act on it? Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, 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 said, she, talk, yeah, she, talk. she talks beforehand. Talk and then act. Talk, then act. It's very good. I, I maybe I'm, I'm th- you know hearing all these responses opens me up a little bit to this opportunity. I would I, love it if you would do that and share your experiences. Yeah, you, I, I'm looking for one right now. I know. Why do you think that's so funny? It's just funny to think that you are gonna go into this alternative lifestyle. Why? I just it just doesn't seem to fit. Although you're wearing a a cougar print vest right now. Yeah, I'm channeling Shiny. Uh, Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller wore a cougar print vest. You did. I don't remember. I don't this. know if it's cougar or leopard print, or you know. It could of be, course, you you just see everything as cougar print. Yeah, but truthfully, I just that just means that the cougars like that print. It doesn't necessarily mean that because I don't think cougars actually have spots or oh, prints like that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I am. I, I'm I should have said animal a print. Little, uh, Ferris Bueller, uh, you know, adding a little spice to my life. Oh, look at you! You're just wild thing, you. Yeah. Wild thing. Wild thing. We'll end with Joseph, who says, okay. we're in our 50s, and we usually handle it with role play and fantasy with a tiny bit of occasional swinging. Oh, there. So there our sneaky it, freaks like to swing. You know, we got some sneaky-ass freaks out there. I got to tell you something. That's so weird to me, by the way. What? When in my generation, mm. no, there was no talk about swinging unless you were weird, some, something that was definitely off on your relationship. That's oh, the way it was. It was always like, a, you know, a negative thing if you were a swinger. Not and, the case anymore. But I remember being at this one place and everyone is pointing to this couple and going, they're swingers. Mm. Like something weird about the, that one particular couple. And meanwhile, I do know of my, and during my generation, of a lot of people that have strayed out of their marriage and have broken up because of this. Okay, so it's better to be a swinger if you have that inclination and want to oh. stay with the partner. Yeah, or it just it's it's just more the norm now. Yeah, totally the norm. Are you kidding me? People introduce me. Oh, this is this is my partner. We're in an open relationship. No one gives a fuck. It's very different. Very different times we're living in, Cam. Different times, different strokes, different folks. All right, let's. Should we move on, Mother? We should move on. I just want to thank everyone for yeah. participating in this weekly question. You make our show possible. You lubricate our conversations, and we love. If you're listening to this and you haven't texted us yet, give us a text. Why not? Text us at 
three five six three nine two zero. Yeah, give us a text. Give us a text. We'll we give promise. you a weekly text. And we promise not to spam. We don't do that kind of thing. We don't spam. Kim, in, in thinking about all those questions, I wonder if we're going to encourage our sneaky base li- listeners, sneaky, sneaky freaky, base. our sneaky little freaky little listeners to go and try these things that we haven't experienced ourselves. Yeah, I can't really vouch for this. I'm not it's, vouching either. You know, who we knows? We take no this? responsibility if you guys try this stuff and it turns out to be a big bust. Yeah, this is not, this, we have not uh, tried it or approved it, but uh, apparently it works for some. Who yeah, knows? Yeah. Cam, lately I've been feeling a little anxious, overwhelmed, not really in the mood to masturbate or have sex. So what do you do? I put on Dipsy. Dipsy, our favorite app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. And, and mother? I would love to play one. You want me to fire this one up? Yeah, will you do that, please? It's called In the Front Seat. I need to get closer to him. The seatbelt dug painfully into my skin. Oh, fuck, Jack. Oh, oh you're going to make me lose control. So lose it. Oh, wow. I mean, sometimes this is better than regular porn, video porn. This is like this something. This is way better than video because porn. Because you can just imagine it all. With I different... just fucking, I'm in the front seat with them. And new content is released every week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. I love it. They have sleep stories, wellness sessions, and now they offer written stories. If you are trying to spice up your me time. And who doesn't want to? Or heat things up with a partner. And who doesn't want to? <laughs> Check out Dipsy. For listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash mom. Did you say free, Cam? An extended 30-day free trial. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to dipsystories.com slash mom. Dipsystories.com slash mom. The link is in our episode's description. You got nothing to lose. Try it. You'll like it. Moot, you're about to move, right? I sure am. Do you know what you're going to do with your mattress? I do not. Well, let me recommend something to you. Helix Sleep. We love Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep is an incredible website and company that will send you a mattress perfectly custom to you. I mean, you can't go to a store and try on mattresses that have been tried by hundreds of other people and expect to get the same thing that you had in the store in your home. I once went to a regular mattress store. I sat down on this bed. It felt nothing like what I ended up sleeping on when they sent me one. With Helix Sleep, you go online. You take their two-minute quiz, okay? They ask you a bunch of questions like, do you prefer to sleep on a soft, medium, or firm mattress? I took the quiz. They recommended a Helix Dawn Lux mattress. For me, I've been sleeping on it for the past year every night a wonderful sleep and it was super easy to set up they just sent the box to me i easily brought it into my apartment took it out of the box bada bing bada boom i had a new mattress it's a wonderful mattress i highly recommend it okay and helix if you don't like it you have a hundred nights risk free to try it out if you don't like it send it on back Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sex talk. That's helixsleep.com slash sex talk. Get yours at helixsleep.com slash sex talk. The link is in our episode's description. All right. I, I, I would like to uh, dive in and share a little about my life. Please do. You know, there's something very... In- what? It's just like you... Went- you know, and you just spread your fingers out like you're about to, like... Divulge sh- something? Yes. I am about to divulge something. The, go ahead and... S- s- what? Fill it out. What is it? Some days after work, I, you know, I work in t- from the fucking... I get in a fucking fugue state and basically just don't eat and just work for like 13 hours straight like an idiot. Which you know is completely unhealthy. And by the end of the day, I'm so agitated. It's like... A, 11 o'clock rolls around and I just need any distraction possible. Well, have you ever thought of like stopping for meals? Okay, I'll, 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 I figure, figure out some food at some point in there. But the other night I found myself, I'm on my couch and I couldn't distract myself enough. At the same time, I was looking at Instagram and fucking trying to jerk off at the same time. Oh my God. Separated. 
Is this nuts? Well, I don't even what explain. Is that, is that the 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 pinnacle of mental unhealthiness? No. What? <laughs> you are the pinnacle of mental. I am the pinnacle of. My, my, I mean, I find that that's what social media does to you. It, it's just like it it lures you in. It's like the devil versus the angel on your shoulder type it of thing. It wasn't even my my one hand with the with the jerking off wasn't even attached to the the brain that was trying to focus on the Instagram. Like what? I'm literally scrolling Instagram, you know, looking at ads, looking well, yeah. at all sorts of shit, yeah. trying to jerk off at the same time, trying to distract every cell in my brain. No, it's not even distracting. It's like you are you you're so focused on getting things accomplished that you can't even give yourself the two minutes to jerk off. No, 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 no. It's a complete. It's a complete attention. It's an attempt to distract all cells in my body. I mean, what did we do before we had this? I don't, probably a lot of alcohol. No, I am yeah, just I talking about. We're drinking a lot more. No, I'm talking during the week. For example, we'd have like just TV to watch. You 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 weren't sc- scrolling on your phones because there were no such thing as cell phones. You yeah. just watch TV. Yeah. You sit on your couch. You might eat something. You might jerk off while you're watching TV, but your hand is not on your phone and, and on your dick. I don't understand. What are you doing? <laughs> I was, I, I did. The, it's the same sort of escape. They're all escapes to me, and I just couldn't get enough escape. And then I discovered, you have you ever? I don't know if you've ever done this. Have you ever been on the phone with someone and just started kind of like <laughs> masturbating, jerking off? I hope it wasn't me. Definitely not you. Oh my god! Because no, next time I'm it, on the phone with I'm you, not, I'm going to make sure we're on Facetime, so I don't have to see or hear anything like no, that. No, I'm not necessarily jerking off, but just like a fondle or like a touch. You're just, just moving things keep, around. Keep it alive. Keep the whole body awake. <laughs> you don't do that. No, you think I sit there and play with myself <laughs> while I'm on the phone with someone? You sit down. Who are you on the phone with? That so, you're doing? Someone this? very boring, I guess. My friends must be very boring, just sitting there, kind of fondling my balls or something. Are like you that. kidding me? It, is this a weird thing? Well, itching it is not unusual for men. It's it's, it's but it sounds like, like it's more like fondling. <laughs> yeah. What are yeah. you doing? I don't know. It, it wasn't even. I, I actually think I caught myself not. It was not even doing this. Um, I, it was not with a friend at the time. I think on the phone. I now think you're I was backtracking. Watching, now you're no, no, backtracking. I I think I wrote you're this down. You're saying you're on the phone with someone and then you started fondling. Well, I'm sure it's happened in the past. But I'm. Sh- but <laughs> I was watching a YouTube tutorial video. On what? I don't know. It's a fucking DIY project or something like that. And I just saw myself. Learning how to paint a mailbox or something. I I think it was trying to, how to figure out how to upload a a video podcast to Anchor or something like that. While you're figuring. You know, it was for these sneaky freaks. It was exactly for them. I was doing it. you listeners out there. I was trying to figure out how do we get this video podcast onto Spotify. They're, okay, you're doing this and, all and, and kind and, of and, you know just touching and, myself and a little touching bit, touching yourself at the same time. Yeah, just you, a little touch. It's not it. a full blown jerk off. It's just a little touch. Why can't you just put one and then do the other? I think because you I know can't. neither lasts a long time. Excuse me. Well, from what I've gathered in the past, I, I'm going to take it as a compliment to say I, we would be able to get this video podcast on Spotify very quickly. Exactly. Thank you. Fuck. But even so. Ah. Even if it was a long 10 minutes each, 20 minutes you can spare to separate these two activities. It's just an escape. I'm just trying to escape, you know. Jerking off is not escaping. This is a part of normal life. It's an escape. It's not an escape. Why do you feel like it's some sort of a waste of time? It's not. No, I'm not saying escape is not necessarily a waste of time. It's just a kind of a departure from my day to day. Think of it this way. What? This what? is this is how Jesus I think Christ. of masturbation. I, who needs it, this? It's very important to masturbate because you release all these wonderful endorphins and hormones that in the long run are going to benefit you physically. Well, I can still believe that and think it's an escape. It's an escape. Why I'm is... working all day. You know, just jerk off. You don't take That's time during your day to jerk off. You think in the middle of our fucking no. So apparently you've been in jerking off in grocery store bathrooms, etc. I'm very free with my jerking off. Apparently, yeah. I thought you jerked off like once every month or something. You know, people are doing month. a lot of free the nip these days. I'm doing a free the dick. Just free jerk the off. dick. Not like a whole Louis C.K. thing in public or with people. But you know, you take the time when you need to and, and jerk it off. I'm I'm all in favor of that. I don't understand why you have to do it at the same time as cooking garbanzo beans, which you mentioned in the it past. It was a YouTube tutorial video. What's the problem with that? No one's affected by it. Okay, I got. I'm not judging you. If you, this is how you want to do. You're, it's called multitasking. I told this to a friend. Yeah, it is multitasking. I told this to a friend, and you know, this guy starts going off about how he is just was watching hours of porn. 
and just, or he's watching so much shit. And I, I never fucking watched hours of porn over here. Why? Again, too much of a waste of time. But anyway, he's watching hours of porn. I'm thinking to myself, what is this guy watching? These must be very good videos. I mean, honestly, because to I, me, I, I couldn't watch an hour of porn. First of all, when he's, it, he's doing all the research, you know, when he's done with his jerking off or whatever. Yeah. Does he continue to watch it and try to jerk off again? Is that what goes on? I don't on? think so. I think it's a one time and done. And I start thinking to myself, you know, he's doing a lot of research over here. Research of what? Which are the best videos out there. But in that's, a, in a several that, hours of, of, of searching, you're going to find some good shit. Why? That's very subjective. No, he's he's probably found this shit, and I want to ask him, hey, send no. me some links. No, that doesn't make sense, Kim. That's a weird thing to ask a friend. No, it's not. But you, don't, you don't think if I asked this guy, hey, send me some links, he wouldn't be weirded out? Well, let me say something. What makes one better than the other? It's, 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 some videos are higher quality, better No, higher people, quality doesn't better necessarily... In, better intimacy. This is good porn or bad porn. Excuse me. I don't like high quality. Yeah, I know you don't. I like, like low quality. quality. I like amateur. So what's good for one person is not necessarily good for the other. So he may not—he he may be showing you videos of someone fucking a donkey, and that may not excite you. Well, I wouldn't even be able to know that because I, I apparently it's inappropriate to ask for links from another friend. You you did? Why? I I'm curious what the fuck this guy is watching. So you called him up and say, "Hey, I understand you've done some curating." Of well, he was saying you know, hours of watching porn. I'm thinking, send me the highlights. Oh my god, Cam! You, so you, what happened? Weird, he didn't say it. He said it was weird. It is weird because it's like a personal thing is what you're di deep diving why can't we in. Both, why, why can't we, it's like enjoying a good book. You can recommend it to a friend. No, this is you being lazy again. I'm not being lazy. Not I'm, even I'm, lazy. I'm looking for the high quality. I'm looking for the creme de la creme that's then why don't you do to your the own, top. Then why don't you do your own research? I'm not going to do the two to three hours. It's like if I'm traveling to a new place, I don't want to have to go through all the fucking travel guides and talk to all the locals. Just tell me the best fucking cafe to go to and I'll go. If you go on... X, X, I don't need my mother's XX. recommendations. No, no. If you just go on X and XX, you go on that website I'm and it says best of. I'm not going on that website. Best of. Well, go on any of those porn, uh, porn hub or whatever. They always have a best of or video of the day or something. Yeah. Then you got all these horny guys jerking all over the place. They're giving you their recommendations. It's right. like having an IMDb for porn hub. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Yeah. Maybe you should make one. But this is like, you know, you kind of want someone similar with similar tastes to you to be recommending it to you. Who knows who these guys are that's getting... Who it's... knows what your your erstwhile friend is, has the what same taste? What was the taste. word that you used? Erstwhile. Erstwhile. Yeah. How do you know if this erstwhile friend has yeah. the same taste as you? He's probably got good taste in porn. Why? Maybe a little more aggressive than my, my taste. That's what I'm talking about. What if it's like, mon you know, swinging from the trees like a monkey, grabbing onto any branch and... What's with all the swinging? Oh, you're wearing goddamn cheetah print right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving giving you a lot of jungle, jungle vibes right jungle now. Jungle vibes are going on right now. I don't understand. I'm just saying nothing you said makes any sense as far as like knowing what good or bad or exciting porn is. Because especially someone who's researching for like hours, they may go off into some tangent that makes glory hole secrets like vanilla. I love that. That's the that is the the root of your issue, not the fact that I'm asking my friend for porn recs, but that you think that we might just have different tastes and yes. so it's not worth our time. That's weird. That's weird? That's weird. Why is that weird? That's weird. The weirder thing. Why is that weird? That it, that my mother thinks it's fine to ask for, for someone to, for porn recs yes. and not okay because we might have mismatching libido or, or desires. Yeah. You got something to work on over there. <sighs> All right. Let's move on. Okay. Anything else going on in your life? I was invited to a 4th of July party. Yes, you were. A different one than the one I attended. I attended yours. That was very nice of you. Because I heard there was free food over there. Great food. And great then, alcohol. And then there was another one that was further away. The fly, There was a flyer. It said music, drinks, pizza, and good energy. As soon as you saw pizza, you're like, I'm staying over with, with my mother. No. As soon as I saw good energy, I said, I can't guarantee that. Oh, you didn't have good energy. I, I I can never guarantee good energy. I could be alone in a fucking in my apartment, well rested, by myself, very very, very good nutrients flowing through my body, and I can just be in a stunk mood. So you didn't go because it said good energy. It's you don't want to energy. be obligated said, to have good energy. What if I get there and I'm in a bad mood? Then I just leave. 
Yeah. I drove all the way across town. Now I have to leave because it's bad, bad energy. Well, You're maybe you could fuck fake it. Up it. The place. Maybe you can fake it till you make it. Nah. I kind of don't like the good energy either. Like, what does that mean? Is there like someone going to take some like a meter? Like, I mean, oh, you, you walk in the door. You're good, good energy. You, you know, know you're you positive. You know, what if someone steps step on my foot at the party? No, I'm just big, saying, heavy guy steps on my fucking foot. You? Who's judging you? Ruined my whole day, and I'm gonna have to leave the party. I don't know someone are. steps on your foot that would put you in a bad mood. Yeah, I decided I'm going not going to the party. Because of the energy comment, I think they're just saying and, yeah, don't come. And it was a little further than your party, and it said pizza as opposed to a whole gourmet barbecue that you had going on. I, I would like to question as to why someone write good energy. Like, what are they going to do? How is someone going to determine if the person walking in the door has good energy or not? You know, that's a good question. I think your energy is pretty good. Right now? Right now, it's pretty good. Okay, so what you, are you... In general, you average very good energy. That's the nicest, one of the nicest things you've ever said to me. Thank you. I do I do strive on energy. You got good energy. I thrive. I shouldn't say strive. I strive for good energy and I thrive on good energy. I think your energy is generally pretty good too. Generally. Generally, because you've seen me bad energy. I Usually see after you, the podcast, I'm bad energy. Yeah, I've seen you after we work long and hard. Yeah, I, on this podcast. On any podcast, on anything. You can get a migraine and we can be driving in the car and you'll open the door and vomit. Bad energy. Bad energy. <laughs> Trying to vomit that energy out of me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, how was your 4th of July? What was going on over there? Uh, 4th of July. Well, for one thing, it was your father and my would have been 40th wedding anniversary had he not been killed. How do you feel about that? I feel kind of neutral. I just don't feel really much of anything. Do you still count it? Is yeah, I don't know. Does it count? It's like when someone dies, do you count their birthdays? Oh, they would have been you know, like your father would have been 65. Yeah. Old and man. that would have been, he wanted to be old, but that would have been our 40th anniversary. Yeah. So I don't really know what to feel about that um, other than. Strange. Or it is what it is. Yep. What are you going to do? I don't know. Yeah. It didn't particularly make me happy or sad or neutral. It just was kind of like, well, it's been 16 years. Yep. Very interesting. Do you want to be wished happy anniversary? And I don't really particularly like that one. Some of my friends are like, oh, thinking of you today. Eh, eh, eh. Don't think of me. Yeah, th th <laughs> well, <laughs> think, think of me about on a day that, that, that uh, a tragic event didn't happen. I mean, I know it's all from, you know. It's my, out of care. It definitely is meaning well. But they also had relationship with, with him and they should be thinking about him, oh. not thinking about me and his relationship. It's implied. Who's, who are they texting, though? Why are they texting me about it? Why don't they text themselves about it? Okay. All right. Thinking about my friend today. Just thought I'd tell that to myself. Yeah. It's a weird thing. And I also used to put things on Facebook and all that. Eh. Fuck it. Why do I need that pity? Fuck? I don't do that shit. Pity looks, pity comments. I don't want anybody feeling sorry for me. No. Anyway, so that's well, that. Happy, don't, not happy anniversary. I don't know what you want See, me to say. See, there you go. Here. You're about to say happy anniversary. I don't know what you want me to say. Okay. Don't say happy anniversary. I, I would like to mention... That there was a tragedy now that is Jesus Christ hanging over my anniversary from now on, which is in my neighborhood where I, um, you know, we all raised our kids in Highland Park. I mean, we didn't grow up in Highland Park. You didn't grow up fifteen minutes from our home. If, yeah, very short distance, very similar friend groups. My friends work there, live there, play there. I've done a lot of partying in that area. Um, my, some of my best memories are from that area. And now I got to say, it's been tainted by this shooting. Unbelievable. It's horrible. What's going on? I don't know. I, I don't even know what to say, except that we've got to do something about these rifles, these these assault weapons. I mean, it can't it can't go on anymore because we're it's it's killing people, literally killing people, and it's not protecting people. It's just killing these mass crazy. Kill okay, what? It's horrible. No, I thought I you were brushing no, me off. No, I wasn't brushing you off. No. I, I, I'm brushing this shit. This oh. is horrible. Get this shit out of here. Yeah. Anyway, luckily, so, luck, all well, of your friends are safe. My friends and their, their kids and their grandkids are all safe. Um, there were uh, some injuries I heard, but uh, nothing that uh, has indicated death or anything like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that went on. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. That's it? <laughs> that's all you got? 
That's what's going on in your we life? Had, we had a little party over at the 4th of July. You know, I love that I live in a building where it's a community. Yeah. Yeah, I you like got, Talk about sneaky freaks. There, there are I, some freaks They're in not my, sneaky. They're not sneaky. They're, they're open freaky. freak. They're yeah. openly freaky. Oh, my God. The strippers dancing around over there. I don't know there. where they came from, by the way. People bring some strange guests like, like, like you. You know, my friend, my friend told me when she's at a pool, like a public pool like this, She's looking for strings hanging out of a bathing suit. Tampax? I, yeah. Is that a thing? Uh, are you freaking kidding me? No, that's not a thing. You've that's never a, seen a string? I've never st- saw one or wanted she, to see, she, have she, one. She's on string watch the whole time. Not doing a diva cup thing. Not doing a diva cup. She's looking for people if they got... If Why is she doing this? I don't know. I mean, I, I can't even stand now, one. No, I, I can't stop thinking about it. I can't, st- I can't handle pu- pubic hair sticking out all over the place either. Oh, God. You're going to upset a lot of... Uh, the sneaky freaks over they there. Just tuck it in. All right. It doesn't need to be coming out. Their body, their choice. <laughs> That's true. You want to have your pubic hair looking like a force? Go for it. Go for I it. I don't give a shit. I really don't. But I am not in search of strings either. Well, I, I'm now on string watch just in case. Why? What, what, I'm just what, doing a little research. You want to know who's got their period and who doesn't? Why not? Why? It's interesting. Why? I've never seen a string. You've never been with a girl and she showed you a Tampax string? I've seen that. I mean, yeah. But just hanging out? Hang, Interesting. Hang out. I don't know. My friend said this like everyone should know this and I'd, I'd, I'd never heard of this. Is it a male friend that said this? No. It's a female friend. Yeah. And she's interested in strings. She just was looking for the strings. All let right. Me, let me just say it's a weird quirk. <laughs> okay. That, 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 it's, it's a very weird, bizarre quirk. It's a quirk. weird quirk and for it, sure. You know, maybe she doesn't like to swim in the pool with you know maybe excess you know material coming out of the strings i i don't know moods you know how many friends tell me they are so frustrated with their sex because they're on some sort of ssri or they're just having some issue that's preventing them from getting hard how many cam a lot of them okay you know where i tell them to go i'm guessing rexmd that's it rexmd.com rexmd makes getting generic and branded viagra easy Everything's online, even the prescription, and they deliver it to your door. There's no office visits, no talking to a receptionist, no having to wait in the waiting room, and then going into this this doctor and telling him, you know, my dick is not going up. It's super simple. And also, do you know that Viagra costs around $90 a pill, but RexMD has generic Viagra for just $2 a pill. Yeah, you just fill out a quick medical questionnaire on their website. A U.S.-based doctor will review your situation and prescribe your generic Viagra if it's appropriate. You can get regular Viagra if you want that. Either way, the dick is going to be going up. It's fast, it's simple, and it's cheap. And you can access your RexMD physician anytime you need afterwards. RexMD has helped over 100,000 guys get generic Viagra quickly and conveniently. And right now, sample packs of generic Viagra are now available for our listeners. Just go to RexMD.com slash mom to get started. That's R-E-X-M-D.com slash mom to get your sample packs of generic Viagra today. That link is in our episode's description. I, I, I think it's time for hit on or shit on. I think we're time to hit, to hit it or shit it. Hit on or, or shit, shit on. on. This is the segment of the show where we get to take your wonderful comments and determine whether they are a hit on or a shit on. Oh we, got a, we got a bunch of comments this week, Mother. Yeah. Because we had one video where I was talking about my bushy eyebrows. Yes. And uh, I just wanted to read a few of these comments. Have you the, trimmed your eyebrows since? I no, not since that video. That that video was taken. Po- I I happened to get a haircut where, you know, I mentioned the bushy eyebrows, and she did a little chick, chick, little cut. You know what? Recently, I had my eyebrows waxed. You did? Yeah. A little waxing. Yeah, it's nice to have someone else like shape your eyebrows. Shape them up. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, Raylene says, well, in response to you trashing my bushy eyebrows. Well, they were looking a little like, what's the guy's name from Schitt's Creek? Uh, Eugene Levy? Yeah, they were looking a little Eugene Levy-like. Okay, well, Raylene says... It's like a says, unibrow. Ro- Raylene says, no, those are good eyebrows, Cam. Keep them. I agree that they're. it's good to have thick eyebrows, because I like thick eyebrows, but I don't like when they're not, like, like when you got know, one sticking out here and whiskers and coming out of your nose and what things like that. What's the scoreboard show? One hit on... For Cam. That was a hit on from Raylene to Fra- you. From Raylene and, and encountering your shit on to Cam. Okay. 
We got another response from Mars Rocks. The eyebrows are fine. Stop picking on him. Oh, you you, you made yourself out to be a martyr now. Two. Two hit on. Well, I don't remember. Neg you're I, a negative two. I do not remember saying shit about your eyebrows. You were saying shit about my eyebrows. I mean, maybe that you bushy. had a particular bushy day. <laughs> we got another comment here. And you might want to... Uh, this is unbelievable. We we have a return of a of an old sneaky freak. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, where did you get this? Is this an email? Yep. Out to of the, your personal email address. My, yes, I don't I don't even know how it started. How did he get your personal email address? Well, in the past, he has somehow found my email address. Okay. And in the past, he's emailed me. And okay. And we have read him. We have read the. And it, this has been several years, by the way, since we've gotten an email from Matt G. Matt G. The return of Matt G. It's unbelievable. He he used to email multiple times a day. Like seven. In the, and then he just went radio silent. Yeah, if something happened, he, he who knows if he was incarcerated. Who knows what the... I, what do you think happened to Matt G during, the, during now and... In COVID? I can't even imagine Matt G in COVID. I mean, he must be bouncing off the wall. The guy has <laughs> definitely got some serious screws loose. Okay. It's so, some loose screws. Um, I'm going to go, he was, he took an extended nature break. Nature break? He was in nature for a long time. I'm going with he was possibly incarcerated. <laughs> okay. All right. Or all right. his mom took his laptop away. All right. So we read us some of the messages that we received from Matt G. Okay. So the first one I got says, and this is all on the same day, by the way. Hi, Karen Lee and Bold. Hey, Karen, Cam, Bam Bam. I still want to have sex with Karen Lee. Sent from my iPod. Okay. There's so many things that are troubling about this. First of all, he's addressed, the subject line was, hi, Karen Lee. Okay. And then he says, hi, hey, Karen. And then he talks directly to me. Yes, he does. Cam Bam Bam. Yeah. Why is he nicknamed me Cam Bam Bam? There's always, he's always con gotten constantly nicknamed. Bam Bam. Me, bam Bam. Or Why Bam Bam? He thinks you're like a little Bam Bam. And right now I could say with that leopard print or whatever cheetah print vest, you are a little Bam Bam. Oh, are you talking about the little F Flintstones baby? I'm talking about the Flintstones baby. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Bam Bam. Yeah. He, you think Matt G has a premonition? That you are like a... I'm like Bam Bam? You were like Bam Bam. Okay. I st but then he goes on to say, I still want to have sex with Karen Lee. Sent from my iPod. Well, okay. first of all, let's talk about the fact... Who has an iPod? Who is an iPod? How is he sending emails from the iPod? I thought these were completely outdated. No, no. I don't a, remember. I don't know. I wanted the last iPod. I think they stopped selling those. And when when they had them, were they capable of sending emails? Do you think he was? He wrote this in and wrote it from like a laptop or something and sent from my iPod just to be weird. I would not put it past him to do. I doubt I he has a laptop. So. I don't think he has. I a laptop. think this came from an iPod. He definitely and figured out a way to... he still wants to have sex with you. There is zero doubt in my mind that he still wants to have sex with me when he says, I still want to have sex with Karen Lee. So that's a hit on. It's a hit on from All right. Matt G. Matt G. Then, I, then the same day, a couple hours later, I did not respond to Matt G. And it says, hi, baby. Oh, boy. Because, you know, we're baby babies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby, baby. It says, hey, Karen Lee, do you remember me, Matthew G.? And I still want to have sex with you. Sent from my iPod. <laughs> he is probably scrolling on his fucking iPod. Yeah. Jerking off at the same time. No, I don't think he's you capable. Don't think, no, I you don't. You don't think I, Matt G is scrolling that iPod, jerking off at the same time? I don't think that he has that capa ambidextrous capabilities. Oh, so you think that this is a feat for me? Like a feat it's actually, you think about it. If you're able to do both at the same time. Like a drummer singing? I mean, I think this is our whole society. Like, I think of myself as like watching TV and having to do that cookie crisp crossword puzzle that your brother hooked me onto or Wordles. I'm doing that while I'm trying to watch TV. At the same time, I'm trying to get something to eat, trying to play with the dog. We're living There's in just, a psycho society right it's now. It's psycho. And I know it's psycho when I'm doing it. I know. And then you can't stop. You got to break that habit through meditation. I'll, I'm going to say one thing. Yeah. If I'm about to masturbate... Mm -hmm. I do force myself to turn everything else off. Oh, look at that. I say it's my time. Very and Even admirable. if it lasts about five minutes, it's my time. Very admirable. And when I have sex, I have to have everything off. You know? I'm sure Dee's would rather be watching the Mets game, but I'm needing everything off. Yep. 
Very admirable, Mother. I'm going to chalk this up to another hit on to you. That was a hit on. And that, that completes our segment of hit, <laughs> hit on or shit, shit on. on. Oh, man. Oh, Thank man. Thank you all for your wonderful comments and, and, and hit on. I really and, appreciate and, that. And, and by the way, I just want to reflect and say, I think uh, this is also somehow a shit on to me. Because he's like saying you're Cam the Bam Bam and. I don't mind the nickname. I mind the next line, which says I still want to have sex with Karen Lee. Why is why does it bother you? The guy is professing his, Again, his I don't want to sexual desires in an open way. He does not need to share that with me. He didn't. He shared it with me. He d- addressed it to me. He says, Cam Bam Bam, I still want to have sex with Karen Lee. I guess he thinks we share our email address. I don't know. All right. Is and it is it, it time for... It is. Mom's News. Mom's News. Mom's News. Mom's News is the segment of the show where my mother shares earth-shattering, groundbreaking news for you. What do we got this week, Mother? Something from the Times of India. Oh, okay. One of my best sources of information. Is this like the New York Times for all of India? I think it is. Okay. This article, I, I just couldn't pass it up. It says, seven unusual sex practices from around the world. Why does this feel like not the New York Times of India? It is. Okay. It's serious. Okay, so we're talking about experimenting in the bedroom. There's seven seven unusual sex practices, and one of them is from Austria. Women feed armpit flavored apples to their partner in rural Austria. Ooh. Now, Ooh. Would you, if you had some sort of a, <clears throat> an apple that smelled like <laughs> someone's armpit, would that be a turn on or a turn off? I would say that's a big turn off. But if it smells like apple smell, like apples smell good. No, 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 no. It's an armpit. Yeah. S- flavored. Flavored. Apple. Apple. How do they get an armpit or an apple? To I'm smell imagining like an these women. They get all sweaty. Oh. They take an apple, oh. and rub it there. Maybe oh. it's like pheromone kind of thing. I don't like it. I don't mm. like it. You don't like That's it. That's not for me. All right. Maybe we should go on then. Disgusting. Go on. We're going on to the number two unusual sex practice: is brothers share a wife in some Nepali tribes. Would you be up for doing that? You and your brother sharing wife? wives. No, it also doesn't sound fun. Okay. This one is one I particularly liked. Old women sleep with young boys in Mangala. Or it could How be young Mang- are we talking It could here? be Mangala. Mangala is the southernmost of the southern group of the Cook Islands, a self-governing state in free association with New Zealand in the South Pacific Ocean. Now, there's a mouth- mouthful. If I, does that describe to you where it is? Why are the older women sleeping with the younger boys? The island is famous because of a strange sexual tradition where young boys are supposed to have sex with older women who teach them the tricks to please their partners. I'm down for this. you got to go to Mangala. Mangala. Can you, if, if, I, if I aged out of the young boys in that tribe? Yeah, I don't think. It sounds like I, it doesn't say how old the boys are. Or how old the women are. I mean, now, they, here's what, something else. These are like 70, 80-year-old women. The women are not 78 years old. Is that what you said? Uh, 70 or 80 70 80 years old i doubt it okay maybe 60 maybe my age i think it would be not so fun to teach young boys that are eager little rabbits eager rabbits <laughs> can just now 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 you gotta wait your turn oh don't do God. not have uh, don't, don't come in within a shit mother well when you were like whatever 15 or 16 can you imagine having sex with a 40 or 50 year old woman yes and what how long do you think you'd last Immediately, it, it's she would not have a chance to to teach you anything because it would be like two seconds. Here's something else. Number four, men took young boys as lovers in ancient Greece. So you have young boys in ancient Greece with the lovers. This is a lot of training here. In ancient Greece, adult men, both married and single, often had sexual relationships with adolescent boys. We're coming to the end, mother. It, well, you're done. I'm done with these. What, what about the Kunong tribe that builds love huts for teenage girls? That's weird. And that's mom's news. Mom's news. Mom's news. Thank you so much for sharing us. I knew you would with us. Your life would not be complete unless you heard those those interesting practices. I'll tell you what makes my life complete. Oh no. And the, what makes all of our listeners. You know, they're all the orifices start salivating. They may run the other way. It get all the juices flowing. 
It's Cam's Uppers. Cam's Uppers is the place to be. be. Fun living is the life for me. It's Cam's Uppers, a segment of the show where I share something near and dear to my heart, something that my mother typically finds... Um, dull. Or? Boring. Or? Titillating. Titillating. You never know. Curveball at the end there. Could sometimes be titillating. This one, actually, it might be um, boring. Okay, then let's skip it. No, no, I'm not absolutely not skipping it. I, I've just been thinking a lot about community recently. I mentioned this in the last show. I mentioned it probably on every show. I am obsessed with this idea of community. I can't, I've never been able to get over it and how I don't think we have enough community these days. Apparently, you live much longer if you in community? are. Yeah. Where'd you find that shit out? I'm researched. In Mom's News? Not for Mom's News. I just do my own research on community. We used to have it in the church or in right. our religions. Or in group. None of it anymore. Or you live with your grandparents. And... Or in the houses, you got you got the grandparents. You're taking care. Of, the grandparents are taking care of the babies, and the parents are taking care of the grandparents. It, is, it was a community. Well, like in India, I believe, and we, we've talked to people where it's more important for the guy to marry someone that the mother gets along with than it is for him to get along with the woman because the woman is going to spend more time with the mother than she is with him. Uh, yeah, and I talked to Nap Nepalese. Uh, Uber driver uh, last time I went to the airport this guy was fantasizing about going back to Nepal because he said in Nepal it's it's a bad day when a stranger doesn't come and ask you for something like a, a cup of water or so, like a piece of bread or something like that is that oh, amazing you want someone to come and ask you for a piece of bread There's people walking through milling about I would love that shit so you want someone to come and knock at your door and say can I get can I get a glass of water yeah, I mean, it's not a complete stranger. The people will usually know each other. It's they like just a, kind of stop by and they say, what's up? Can you get some water? Why don't you go live in those communities like in Finland or where Sweden where they have an like intentional community? a group home where I'm everybody has chores. Shit. Here's, okay, so here's the, here's the Cam's Uppers part of it. I am convinced that all the shit in our society is a result of this lack of community. Of course. The mass shootings. Yeah. It's always these like isolated, depressed, scrawny boys who've been in fucking in, in, inside their computer for the past 10 years. Where, where their people, even pa parents and uncles in the house say, oh, I don't know what he was doing up in the bedroom over there. Exactly. He's being fucking isolated and depressed as fuck because he's got no community. He's got, the only community he's got is this online fucking radical community that he's, you know, associated himself with. That's, first of all, that's that type of shit. And then I also think because we are so starved for community, we 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 any chance we get to be at an in group, to be in inside the group and like for like example, a cult? no, just like if 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 in general there's like a community feel. So like if you're living in community, it's extremely pro life. You're going to adopt those pro life sure, beliefs sure. just to fit in. Yeah. So because we're so starved for this community, we go to great lengths when we can to fit in with whatever is around us inhaling without real critical thought you know i could say the same thing for my very progressive liberal beliefs because i do i want to i want to fit in with my friends and our society but it, i recognize that that also is not good a critical critical thinking isn't necessary so anyway i i was at your, your apartment for the the fourth of july there all the all your neighbors were out on the deck my heart was soaring well, you're kind of part of the community. All, all of my neighbors of know you, and they, oh, yeah, they see you working at my apartment building. And then, and, like, and then, and then one of the the, the community members performed and sang. I, I, my heart was soaring. It's a good community. It, it was a wonderful it's thing. Important. So I, I'm, I am obsessed with this idea of building more community. I don't know how I'm going to do it. If it's going to be in a dance class, if it's going to be a yoga class, a fucking clown troupe. I don't know what the fuck it is, but we're going to develop this community. And maybe you'll meet a girl there. Oh. All right. All right. That's the end of Cam's Uppers. Uh, that was Cam's Uppers. Would you say that was a pretty de boring one or depressing one? It had or? times where I was drifting off, but I'm I'm back. I'm glad we got you back. And I'm glad that we have all you sneaky freaks here with us right now. Thank you so much for listening through this entire episode. Yeah. We know you got a lot of podcasts to choose from. And we're glad you chose ours. Very, very grateful for that. And we're especially grateful to all of our sneaky freaks who support us on Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash sex talk with my mom. If you like the show and you want to keep our lights on, you know, 
paying for this wonderful studio that we get to come to. Check us Dr. out on Self YouTube. Tapes. Check us out on YouTube. Check us out on YouTube. Sex Talk with them on YouTube. But the only reason we're able to do this is through your Patreon donations. So if you want to donate to us, you're enjoying the show, give us a few dollars. Patreon.com slash Sex Talk with my mom. Also, we're having a Patreon party. Woohoo! All of us who support us on Patreon uh, get to hang out with us and we get to hang out with you on Zoom. On Zoom, July 27th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Mark your freaking calendars. And if you don't want to be on, you can always turn the video off and just listen. A it's little a little sleep. awkward when they do that. All right, don't do that. Just be on. Just be on. Okay. All right. And, you know, if you don't have a few dollars, that's fine. Leave us a rating and review. We'd really appreciate it. It helps us wherever you li- listen to it. Just leave, figure out a way to leave us a rating and review. If you need help, you can go to ratethispodcast.com slash mom. I got one for you. Oh, good. This is from Flying Moose 69 I love that he, who, he or she ends it with 69. Flying you know, you, Moose. Well, we don't even want to know how this sneaky freak got that name. This is a sneaky freak. I love how weird this podcast turned out to be. There you go. I'm glad I found out about it. We love you, Flying Moose 69. Thank you for joining us here. And Thank you for little, flying all over yeah, here. flying all over. Uh, we really appreciate it. I'm glad how weird this, this podcast turned <laughs> out to be. You know, what other, you know, what other platform do I get to share about how... You jerk off? You know, I jerk off while I'm scrolling Instagram. What are you scrolling on Instagram besides the... They're you, completely detached. I'm not jerking off to what I'm seeing on Instagram. They're, yeah, they're, completely, not, they're separate. Anyway, you want to sing us out, Mother? Oh, Yeah. Oh, boy. Let me tell you about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees and jerking off while Instagramming. That's not bad. Not bad. I think that's the key. I have to inspire a, a thought. Yes. Give, very give a thought at the end, then I'll like not get so nervous. I'm not going to come up with something. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. We love you. We love you very much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com.